We'll have this discussion. Discussion? What discussion? This is a discussion. Combustion. Coming to you from Denver, Colorado, this is Discussion Combustion Podcast with your hosts, Kevin Batstone and Arthur Raw. Welcome in, everybody. Kevin and I are having a great night already. We hope that you're having a fantastic day. And we have two great people in the building tonight from Downslope Distillery. We have both Katie and Zach. These two are both crucial operations to the business over there. It's going to be great to get to know these folks. Just met them at the fountains about 20 minutes ago. We're going to be drinking some whiskey tonight. We're going to have a couple cold beers. Man, it's always exciting to dive into a new ep. Yeah, definitely excited. So tell us a little bit about Downslope, kind of where it came from you know, where people could check it out. It's off of Arapahoe. So if you're in Colorado and you're around Arapahoe Road, you got to check out these guys. Yeah, so we're over on Arapahoe in Jordan, just a little bit east of the mm, South Top Golf. Um, we've been there since 2009. Um, Downslope was started on the premise of um, passionate people making craft spirits. So we are entirely grain to glass. We bring everything in house. We do everything um, ourselves. We don't bring anything in. We don't blend anything um, from pre existing um, whiskeys or great neutral grain spirits. We do everything in house. Um, Zach can touch a little bit more on kind of the distilling side of things. Yeah, so kind of like Katie said, we, we started in 2009. We were the 16th distillery license in Colorado, so we've been doing it for 12 years. Okay. So <clears throat> Katie and myself, we just recently took over the distillery uh, kind of at the end of February from one of the previous owners. Um, but So it's basically myself, Katie, and then Mitch, who is our head distiller. And mm-hmm. Mitch is one of the original co-founders. He's been with the company since the beginning, since the the whole 12 years he's been there. So he's still doing basically all the distillation for us. And he's kind of like what we kind of lean on in the back. Yeah, he's our mastermind. He's our creator as far as some of the things go. And he's been there since the fruition. So he was part of the original ideation of the company. So he's, yeah, he's the man. Yeah, I I did have a chance to meet him uh, because I went to your distillery with my girlfriend and myself. And we sat down there for two and a half, three hours. We were we were planted. Yeah, and, we had um, a great night. Yeah, it was really fun, man. It was such a personal touch. I mean, once I learned you guys were the operation, and, and Mitch was really cool, too. He's he's putting together some interesting things, though. You guys recently sold out of this, so sorry, everybody that's listening. <laughs> but um, recently, you guys sold out of this really interesting tequila that was aged in a whiskey barrel. And so it was like uh, – and actually, it was, it was not a tequila. It was – an agave spirit yep. aged in a whiskey barrel. So it had this this brown color, but it was really unique. Yeah. So like tequila is a protected nomenclature in Mexico. So since we produce it here, we can't technically call it tequila, but mm-hmm. we make it from 100% Blue Weber agave, like very similar kind of process to how they're making it. And then we aged it in you used whiskey barrels for four years. And then finished it for a year in a, a used tequila cask. So it was a, a five-year-old extra Añejo tequila. Um, it was probably going to be one of about the, the oldest tequilas you're going to find that's made locally in the United States. And the response for it was overwhelming. You know, people just loved it. The It came out spectacular. Um, it picked up. It was, it was really good. Yeah, like even yeah. P- people that don't like tequila or agave spirits, they – or like whiskey alone, they were like, wow, I can't, didn't know that tequila could taste like this. I didn't know that it could have whiskey notes or, mm-hmm. you know, get, I would kept telling people it was like tequila that wants to be whiskey. Like it has like all the good parts of tequila, but also all the good parts about whiskey. And it just okay. came out amazing. Yeah, no, it was, it was delicious, Kevin. I wish you had I a chance. It. It's gone. Now. I need, I'm going to have to try it whenever it's, it's back in stock because <laughs> yeah, I love trying new spirits. Five long years before that happens. <laughs> Is it really going to be that long? <laughs> Yeah, so right now we're we're working on we have Blanco and then we're we have Reposado in stock right now and then you know we'll have Añejos back in about a year because you know kind of when we took over this this business they had about twenty barrels in the in the rack house and it was kind of going through and pulling what we thought was ready to sell and ready to pull out and we went through and we tasted some of these barrels we're like well this one's amazing this is not going to get any better so yeah. let's you know harvest this one bottle it and now it's just 
kind of I do of have one bottle at home. Maybe I'll bring you a little bit up. I'd, lo- I'd love a taste. I'd love a taste. Saving it, that thing is like in the. Yeah, in the like I haven't safe. even opened it because I'm like it's gonna be so long before You're we. Just cherishing it. Again, it. Wow, but, that's, yeah. that's crazy. It's gonna be that long. Yeah. Is is it like a, an ingredients issue? Is it a logistics issue? Is it just the whole process together? What, what's gonna delay this? It's more of the aging process of okay. how long it needs to sit to kind of, you know, build that character inside of the spirit so sitting inside those barrels gives it all that stuff and then we use that use mexican tequila cast to finish it for the last year and that's also why it so maintain those tequila notes as well mm. yeah because it it was very whiskey forward i would say and then we're like well we don't want to let's get into a tequila barrel maybe we can get a little bit more like agave kind of flavor i guess was kind of thinking behind that um just because it was very whiskey forward and mm-hmm. a lot of people were like well what what is this? So <laughs> they're like, well, let's, you know, throw it in a tequila barrel to try to get some more of those tequila notes back out of it. And then it just came out really good. That sounds fantastic. It's like a, a whiskeyla or, or yeah, a tequila exactly. ski. You know, like a tequila ski. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I come up with words on the fly, but I want to try Yeah, it. I mean, we were selling out of it every weekend at the farmer's market. And we had such a great response from it. But, yeah, we're in the works trying to get some more new creative stuff going. And like Zach said, we have the Reposado that we're just working on bottling right now and getting ready. Um, so people are excited about that, too. Our agave yeah. spirits have kind of been – Pushing out more and people, the responses from it have been awesome. Mm -hmm. I'm wearing my Don Soap Agave shirt right now. (laughs) Represent. Represent. Everything I saw from the reviews, you know, doing a little research before you guys got here because I didn't have the the pleasure of going and having a couple few at your establishment. Mm -hmm. So I had to do my research. And what I saw is people really respond well to the place and, and, and the delicious spirits that you offer. So. You're obviously building a good presence. Social media looks good. You know, people seem to enjoy what you guys got going on. So. Oh, definitely. Yeah. yeah. Thank I mean, and, and just the story of, you know, how that um, tequila spirit was put together. You know, that's just one type of experiment that you've had. So you're always, Mitch is probably in there. He probably has a notepad <laughs> and is like putting together. He's like, okay, this worked well 10 years ago. What can I add to there or something? Yeah, how long has Mitch been doing distilling? Well, I mean, we, the distillery's been around for 12 years, and he's been the okay. distiller that, that whole time. And then... He was experimenting a yeah, little bit beforehand. So, which is not, you know, maybe a little off-the-record type deal, but... Uh, he has some experience. Yeah, he say. definitely yeah. has some experience. Yeah. I mean, he's been doing... We also teach a distilling class, yeah. so that's something that... Um, we're super passionate about we don't hide how we do anything we will share ingredients with you we'll share the process with you we do two different classes we have a two-day class Mm -hmm. that's more for people that like want to open a distillery we go through like legal and fire code and kind of like more of the logistics side of the business and then we have a three-day class that's more for hobbyists Okay. and it's more hands-on you get to learn how to make whiskey and gin and you can kind of go through the whole thing and it's and Mitch is great and has been teaching that class for so long and he knows what he's doing we've so many distilleries have come out of that class as well um yeah we've we've taught in thousands of these classes I mean it's I think it's over two dozen distilleries at least across the country and then it's you know all the all over the world too people from like Japan have taken it South and Central make America um, Mexico, like it, people come from all over to come take these classes with us, and and yeah, we had some coffee bean roasters from Hawaii that were like trying maybe to get into huh. distilling that came out, and, um, and so we meet a lot of amazing people yeah. through that and like, too. And our whole thing, like especially with the teaching of, of the classes and stuff, is like we don't really think our competition is like the small craft local micro distilleries, even though there's over a hundred now just in Colorado. Like we mm-hmm. think our big competition is the huge bourbon distilleries in like Kentucky, Tennessee. Um, you know, like, so that's why we're super upfront. We want the local craft people to be making good products. Like that's one thing about Downslope. All of our products are all just spectacular. Like we, I would say the areas we need to, or where we can improve on is more like the branding and the marketing and the sales okay. and stuff like that. But the stuff that we put into a bottle is, is top notch no matter what it is if it's whiskey if it's mm-hmm. agave if it's rum vodka whatever so like we really have like the back kind of production side down and like you know getting out more is kind of where we struggle but like that's why like you know we don't think our competition is the local people because 
you know, if you go into a, a local liquor store, you know, typically you're going to see a shelf that's like local products or mm-hmm. like, especially in Colorado, it's going to say like the Colorado craft spirits section or something or something yeah. like that. And, you know, if, if you're just an average consumer, you know, you walk into that liquor store and you pull a bottle off that shelf and it, if it's not ours and if it's another local distillery and you taste that product and it's not good, you're going to go back to what you're drinking before. And it's, that was probably, you know, Jim Beam, Jack Daniels, or, you know, something yeah, like that. You know? I mean, you know, that, that had its time and place, you know, I'm in my mid thirties. I know Kevin's right behind me. And at this point in life, it's time to give our taste buds a little bit of living. Like it's, <laughs> it's, it's time to have some, some better quality stuff. And, and I agree with that though. Like, you know, set, set your goals high, you know, s- set them high. Don't set these minuscule, easily obtainable goals you said it you, you create a big goal and then you look at it like little steps little accomplishable steps you know so so set that huge goal and then like what can i do today that is obtainable to get me one step closer so i, I really like that mentality of what you're talking about and um like i shop at a total wine a bunch of different liquor stores and and your stuff is right there with with all the other bangers so that's a good mentality to have yeah, and we want to, like, me- create this community. I mean, I think a lot of local distilleries can touch on this, too, is that, like, we're not, like, after each other. Like, we want to create a community where Colorado is at the forefront of these craft distilleries, mm-hmm. and we're making good whiskeys, and we're, you know, we're not trying to, like, put, put anyone down. We're happy for everyone that's doing well. We want everyone to do well in the craft spirit space because yeah. it only opens doors for other people that want to get into it. And, like, we are we like to do experimental stuff, and especially on a smaller scale, it's much easier to play around with ingredients or, you know, flavors and different types of things, which I know Zach is super excited about, and that's something that we actually talked about today. We had um, – I'm going to – to do a shout out for the whiskey sisters supply company they came by today and we talked about green and like that's the kind of stuff that gets us excited like we have you know this new opportunity to partner with someone who is doing great stuff where we can get local colorado grain and make mm-hmm. some awesome spirits from it yeah. that is awesome that's very exciting i think one thing i've noticed is is you guys are really good at focusing on what you do well i mean you touched on it zach they're a little bit said man we're good at what we put in a bottle you know you know that coming out of the gate and you're saying that we can get better at marketing promotion stuff like that that's that, that's a game changer right there when you can really be confident in the product you have and identify the areas we can improve on, right? Because a lot of people don't want to look at the hard facts. You know, how can we make this thing go a little bit further? It sounds like you guys have the right mindset to do so. And speaking of the quality product you put in a bottle, I've been itching to put this yeah, damn thing on the table. Yeah, I've, been, try I, some. I've been trying to do a segue <laughs> to that. We were just in really good conversation. There was a lot of good there. segues, but yeah. no, I wanted to, I did want to, you know, touch on that because I think that's important. You don't mm-hmm. see that with a lot of people. So, you yeah. know, folks, oh, we have no issues over here. Everything's great. But uh, I like the, I like the way you guys are handling this thing. You know, yeah. I've known you for about thirty minutes now, and I, I get good vibes <laughs> from you. So, on that note, check this out, y'all. Yeah, here, let me. Uh, we got that rye or die. I'm gonna throw it up. Woo woo. Throw it up for him. Yeah. So this is this is some good stuff here, and I like the labeling too. It's like yeah. simple. It's. Uh, it doesn't need to be overcomplicated. Yeah. It's got the Colorado Proud on there. Simple. Tells what it is. You know, I get a good vibe from from the bottle already so all right why don't you grab me a cup so i can taste this thing you want to pour us out yeah let's do it let's do it yeah and that's definitely something that we've seen too like being out in the community we've been doing a lot of like local events and we attend two farmers markets we do the lewisville farmers market um and we also do the south pearl farmers market in denver um and we just see a great response. Like once people get it in their mouth, they're like, holy shit, how did mm-hmm. I not know about Downslope? And it's like, well, we're here now. And that's kind of like what Zach touched on too. Do you two we're, want? Yeah, yeah please. Yeah. yeah. Rye or die. Throw, <laughs> throw it around Hashtag here. Hashtag rye or die. Yeah. yeah. I'm excited to kind of taste this rye a little bit because I'm typically a bourbon guy. You know, that's, that's what I'm familiar with. Um, so rye's I haven't touched too much on, so I'm sure you guys are going to light me on what I'm about to be tasting, some of the ingredients, yeah. and maybe how the rye process works. Yeah, yeah, before we taste this, that would be kind of yeah, fun to hear about the notes and stuff. And yeah, because yeah, obviously you guys are way more educated than I am on this. <clears throat> so, like, rye in, in general, it's it's kind of known for being spicy. So, it, it, you know, a lot of ryes, they'll pick up a lot of, like, peppery notes or, like, a lot of pepper flavors, and they're yeah, usually a little bit harsher 
and usually they are a little bit hotter is what, what I would call. Okay. Um, you, you generally get a little bit less yield off rye grains compared to like malted barley or corn. It's us- and just a little bit uh, more difficult to work with as a distiller. It has a, a lot of proteins in it, so it, it tends to like gunk up your mash tun and where you can't like it's called like a, a stuck sparge where you can't get it to separate or water. Hmm. Um, we've been working with rye quite a bit, so we kind of have it, it down pretty well. Um, this rye you guys are tasting right now, it's 80% rye, 20% malted barley. Um, one thing I like well, like about our rye is it's a little bit, a lot smoother than a lot of the ryes you kind of find out yeah. in the market. Oh, yeah. It still has a lot of that spice flavor, but I don't really equate our rye to pepper spice. I, I more go towards like cinnamon, clove, nutmeg type taste flavors. That. It's yeah. a little bit, you know, the clove and stuff, it just is... It's in there for sure, and like that's the one thing I like about yeah. our rye is I think it doesn't taste like anybody else's. Yeah. Like, and I also think too, like a lot of ryes do have that bite on the back, which kind of discourages people from being like, I I don't like rye, and I'm always like, just try it, and if you don't like it, I'm not gonna be insulted, but. I think there is, like, a fear out there because some ryes do have that bite on the back that's like, oh, I don't want that. Mm-hmm. Um, where ours doesn't have that bite, it's, you know, still has that those rye flavors, but it's a lot smoother than some of the ryes out there in the market. Um, but like Zach said, the cinnamon notes and the, the – you can still kind of taste the barrel in there as well. Um, yeah, it has a lot of, like, sweet, sweet oak flavor. But, <clears throat> you know, one thing, though, is, like – a lot of the rye you kind of find out in the market. Um, a lot of them are sourcing that rye from mainly is just like a, a big distillery in Indiana called MGP. So a lot of ryes that you find out in the mo- market, mm-hmm. like you know, like your Bullet uh, Rye, for example, like that's basically all MGP rye. What is M- MGP rye? I don't. Know. So it, it's this giant distillery in Indiana. Okay. So and then they basically are just this huge production. And then facility. they just throw it out there. People buy it at like a wholesale. And price. then yeah, and they buy it at wholesale prices. They buy it by the barrel, or okay. they buy it by like the tanker. You know, some oh, okay. of these places are huge, and they're buying you know just enormous amounts of whiskey, and they're just bottling it, labeling it, and selling it to you. Uh-huh. Like, that's one thing we will never do. We've never sourced any alcohol, like, even for our vodkas or even for, like, our gin. We make all the alcohol for everything we make. So that's why, like, another reason why, like, none of our stuff tastes like anybody else's because mm-hmm. we're not using the same alcohol that yeah. all, everyone else is using, you know? And, like, what he's talking about, like, with the gin and the vodkas, you can source, like, a neutral grain spirit and then bring it in-house and then do your own infusion on yeah, it or absolutely. your own gin basket making or, you know, put your own kind of touch yeah, on it. Like, however you're infusing those botanicals. A lot of people will just buy just grain neutral spirits and then, which is yeah. totally, which is totally fine, you know, like, that's totally acceptable. <clears throat> Especially for, like, the gins and stuff, like, a lo- you know, it's very common and, like you can because then it's more about like with botanicals and what your like infusion it kind of is like you know but like for like the rye whiskeys though i think that's why ours is so unique though because like a lot of people are sourcing that rye or like a lot of people you know places are making it though too like you know not gonna knock on everybody but yeah <clears throat> but i think that i think that's why ours stands out though. it's because it's not mgp it's our own rye that we make in house and it's very unique and how we're aging it too I mean, I th- I think it's like really delicious and it's got good flavor for sure. I enjoyed that. Yeah, si- sitting here sipping it while you while you two are educating us, <laughs> it, was, it was quite the that, experience. Yeah, that was. We were just sitting here taking it in as we were getting educated on. It. Now, do you guys plan to work with like distributors, or how do you plan to get this thing? You know, what's the goal with getting these bottles in every every liquor or you know distributor you can? Uh, so we're with RNDC Republic National okay. Distributing Company. They're like one of the largest yep. in the state and probably the whole country they're a huge distributor so we we have the ability to be everywhere oh yeah really but like that like we're so small batch and we're such a tiny small <clears throat> distillery um like so do you have to be in in colorado yeah so right now okay. we're you know basically only distributed in colorado and you know it's kind of like you know picking and choosing where we want to be as mm-hmm. well like we want like a couple good accounts that do well for us and you know kind of focus on those first and then kind of grow from there is kind of where we are to yeah. see the future. Like we want to be stuff. in places like, you know, like whiskey lounges or like ski areas and places where, um, you know, it makes sense. We don't need to be at every the corner bar, bar you, you know, know joe's you bar on yeah, joe true. schmo avenue like yeah. that's not what we're trying to do especially because we are small like 
we, especially like the Añejo, we couldn't even give that to distribution because we were selling it so fast. Mm -hmm. So like those kinds of things, we want to make sure that like we're putting in the right places. Yeah, that makes sense. So kind of, did you? No. Okay. Because I was thinking about, I was thinking about the flavor of this and how you guys were talking about how a lot of rice have a bite. Mm -hmm. And, um, because I, I can definitely feel like a little tingle afterwards, but it's not like, well, how would you describe a bite? It's, so it's right. definitely there. Like it definitely has some of that, you know, bite, but like if it gives you that like instant like gag back reflex, of your throat. you know, uh, like, like if you, yeah. Oh yeah, none of, none of that. No, this is nice. Yeah, you don't get that feeling yeah, for this sure. Is, this is yeah, I feel nice. like the only experience I had with rye prior to this, because I like I was, uh, you know I'm bourbon guy, Crown Royal, I do a lot of the, those kind of mainstream hitters. Um, rye whiskey in the past for me, some of the ones I tried, I won't call it their names, but I do get that almost gag reflex with it. This I do not. I think I feel there's a sweet essence when it hits my tongue. It's got that nice kind of you know good essence as I swallow it, and it doesn't give me that uh, you know cheap feel. You know you can taste the quality mm -hmm. in this, and that's just off my first sip. So. I'm enjoying it so far. Yeah, and it's really great for cocktails, too. Like, it holds its own within there if you add mixers or things like that. Also, our old fashions. I think you may have had one when you were my, over. My girlfriend had yes. a couple of those. Um, those it was are, very good. I yeah, tried they're well. like one of our number mm -hmm. one cocktails. Um, but it's, they're, it's so good in an old fashion. And, you know, just kind of like, I think it just holds its own without, like, being lost. Mm-hmm. What would be the best thing to mix drink with this rye whiskey right here? Could you do like a whiskey sour with it, you think, or is it a little bit of a different... Oh, yeah. We do a whiskey sour at the distillery. Um, we do old fashions. We have a couple um, like seasonal cocktails right now. We have one called Springtime that's made with egg whites and lemon and some thyme. I think I saw somebody ordering those when, when we were in there, too. Yeah. Yeah. And Zach, we'll good Zach's egg the mixologist. Drink. What did you, uh, did you go to school for mixology? No, I went to school to make beer. <laughs> really? Yeah. yeah, so I went to a beer school at MSU Denver here in, in, in town. Um, so I have a, a craft brewing degree from there. So then I'm I'm kind of a, a beer maker who kind of got a little confused and started making whiskey. Do, do you do like <laughs> a, do you do home batches or anything like that or uh, occasionally? I mean, they, I, they yeah. stink up the whole house like it's. Yeah, I just don't like before I was home brewing all the time, but now I'm so busy I don't really get the chance to, but I, you yeah, know, I I'd still love making beer at home and then but I, you know, I make a lot of like crazy weird beers, like, you know, sour and like mixed fermentation kind of stuff. Okay. Like really kind of into those, but so I just haven't really had a chance to do it as much as I would like to, but I I still have I think I still have a couple going in my closet at home right now. So nice. <laughs> so you're like a like glorified beer chemist, I feel like, because there's a lot of chemistry behind mixology, isn't there? Well, as far as like what you can balance, what you can't, you know, the pHs and what's going to mix well, what isn't. Maybe yeah. I'm overcomplicating. Well, I, th it, I think mix mixology is making cocktails. Yeah. Sure, but there's got to be a science behind yeah, which, what works have to too. be. But yeah. I, there, I mean, there is a ton of chemistry and science inside the distillation process yeah. and the fermentation. And yeah, there's hundreds of compounds in whiskey, and it's you know it gets super, it gets pretty complicated, and especially if you're trying to, you know, find what esters you're targeting, the flavors that you want, and like mm -hmm. how do you, you know, get there. You know? Boy, it's been fun drinking some whiskey tonight. But you know what? I got to tell you a little bit of something. If you want to get outdoors, if you really want to see the Colorado outdoors, the beauty that this state has to offer, there's only one place to go. And that is W-O-A-M-E-E-T dot com. That's Wild Outdoor Adventures. Absolutely. You can see it on the bottom of the screen. Go ahead, punch that in, create a free account, see what people are doing, hope for teens, hope for vets, create some memories, create some friendships. It's a wonderful place to start a wonderful adventure. And that is hashtag less dreaming and more exploring. And today's episode is also brought to you by Mountain Made CBD. Head over to mountainmadecbd.com to stock up on all of your crystal clear CBD needs and punch in that promo code DCPC. It's going to save you 20%. Why not save some money on the best CBD products in the in the entire market? They got the Build 50 milligram CBD tablet you take in the morning goes great with caffeine. This thing is going to start your day off right and that is the hashtag go like hell mentality. Go like hell, baby. We're jumping back into this bad boy. He's that's... like drawing stuff on the whiteboard. Do you know what this is? He's like, lost me at Esther's. <laughs> that, that's what I've, I always felt. There's like way more science behind it than the average eye would realize. 
you know, as far as, as putting all these ingredients together, as, as simple as it might sound. I've always seen it. it's got to be like the Einstein behind the whiteboard, putting all the things together. Here's the formula. We're going to mix this with that. you got to distill it for this amount of time. It has to be this temperature. There's a lot that goes into it. Yeah, and we talked about that today, actually, when we were talking about different grains and stuff. It's a lot of times, like, educating the customer on, like, this is, like, such a passion thing. Like, people don't get into making whiskey f- for like the shortcut it's not like it's a quick scheme to get rich it's like this is like a lot of passion behind it and like creativity and like there's a ton of work and like zach said like the chemistry side of it i think people miss that when they're buying stuff and they're like oh yeah this mm-hmm. shit tastes good let's party but it's like yeah, you know like process, there yeah. is a process for this and it takes a lot of hard work um especially in the craft spirit area that's why we're like we promote that a lot is like we want everyone to kind of thrive for sure for sure. I mean, it's great quality stuff. I, I've, I've enjoyed, like, you know, I bought a couple bottles when I came in. The atmosphere was awesome. <clears throat> but, you know, let's talk about the people behind the business a little bit. Like, you two are brother and sister, and, and you grew up in Idaho. Iowa. I, I, keep, I, I keep getting it wrong. I, listen, I've messed up Idaho you and Iowa. You how offensive that is to an Iowan? Just kidding. I'm sorry. <laughs> and then October and August, I've, I've messed those up since I was a wee, a wee young lad. If they were from Idaho, it'd probably be vodka we'd be dealing with. Potatoes. That's true. You know? Yeah. That's true. So, That's fair. So, sorry I messed it up. So what, what brought you guys out to Colorado? Did you move together? Was Did one person come before? What I mean, what was the, the drawing factor of where you ended up? I kind of just made the leap. I was bored and just needed a change. And Colorado at the time, this was 12 years ago-ish, was I, when I looked at it, I thought of it as like the biggest little city. Mm. I don't know if that's like a correct term, but it still had like a kind of a Midwest vibe. People were still nice. It wasn't like moving to LA where like, you know, that kind of thing. And so I kind of just made the leap. I was dating someone at the time that wanted to move here too. We are not together anymore. But um, so then, and then Zach followed me shortly after that, maybe like a year later or so. He, Him and his friends wanted to move out here, like ski culture and okay. kind of the whole thing. So, so you hit the slopes? So when I first moved out here, um, I stayed with her for a little bit and then I end up making my way up to Mount Evans. Uh, it's like the one of the closest 14ers to, to Denver. And they have that, you know, road you can drive up to that, 14. That road feet. is extremely sketch. Yeah, it's very. It's like I think it might be closed partial of it now. Really? Like part of it like fell off Yeah, or I think something. they had fixed it. But um, they have a there's a restaurant and gift shop up there called the Echo Lake Lodge. And I end up stopping in there and meeting one of the owners, Barb Day. And, you know, got to talking with her and she offered me a, a job and a place to live. So I was like, OK, well, nice. I guess I'm going to move to Colorado. And then, you know, I was just going to community college online back home, didn't really have anything tying me back there. And I could just do it all on, on the computer. So I was just like, well, this is, seems like a good chance to to get out of kind of our my hometown, you know. And then yeah, so I we're from like a sm- it's I don't know how big it is now. We're from a pretty small town outside of the Quad Cities, which is one of the bigger areas in Iowa. Um, so, you know, farm community, small town kind of vibe. So it was, an, I think it was a nice break for both of us to kind of see the, the world, I guess. <laughs> see a bigger city. Yeah, yeah exactly. I, I can relate to that because I come from a very small town in New Hampshire around the same time frame. I came out here in 2007. So I'm coming up on my is that 14 year anniversary now. Mm-hmm. In, in in this state and it was one of the best decisions ever made you know small town living it's all i've ever known come out here it's culture shock a little bit you start to experience different things meet new people um you know come out to the rocky mountains it's a beautiful place yeah. it really is but you got 300 days of sunshine 300 days of sunshine hate about that I know, it's, 100 it's a lot. Today. i love it <laughs> i love the heat once again like we were saying on the elevator coming up the heat i'll take that over the rain you know over humidity humidity because that's the thing guys you mean you left the humidity and then you go back to it and you forget how gnarly it is yeah it's so gnarly yeah i'm i'm from colorado so i'm kind of spoiled when it comes to the insect category (laughs) i mean there are insects in colorado and you definitely get bit by mosquitoes out here there's a lot of insects here art no there's a lot but i don't feel like there's as many it's not as buggy yeah like like uh a lot of my family growing up was in ohio and boy the summertime's out there, it's, like, humid. It's that humidity, like, that creates a better environment for insects to thrive in, I feel like. That's true. Than, than the dry heat. But you got a lot of other insects out here and, and other 
critters and, yeah, and I was threats. Yeah, creatures. Uh-huh. You know, you, you're starting to deal with the Western Diamondback rattlesnakes here. You got black widows, brown lacrosse spiders. Yeah. Yeah. You know, there's other threats here. There's scorpions. That you don't see in some of those coyotes. small hick towns. Yeah, yeah, coyotes. <laughs> hopefully, hopefully, you could scare those off. If grizzly bears. We got you guys grizz- have like the next door app. I just feel like that's. What just, is that? It's like your neighborhood, and it's kind of like yes. they can like post like we're having a garage sale, or someone tried to break into my house, or there's a coyote in my backyard, <laughs> or yeah. it's the most ridiculous app. My like the neighbor things that people find to post in your neighborhood. It's just very comical. So if you're looking for some comic relief in your neighborhood, <laughs> down next door. Or, or trying to get paranoid because yeah, there's a <laughs> lot of cr- like I, I moved out of the downtown area not too long ago, and I'm like further like Dry Creek I-25 now. But we had, an, you know, the ring, and so that was the neighborhood app through that, I think. And, yeah, the, the things we would see <laughs> that pe- people are posting and that would happen in those alleyways downtown Denver, like, it's just yeah. ridiculous. There's, there's a lot of crazy people out there. There is, man. And, and those kind of apps kind of keep everybody a little bit on edge. Like, mm-hmm. oh, there's a strange man walking down 8th Avenue right yeah, now. Yeah, exactly. And people start freaking out, you know. So, I don't know. Knowledge knowledge is power. That's always a good thing. The more you know, the better off you are. But at some point, I feel like there's a little bit of paranoia that kicks in with it. Well, it's like a conspiracy theorist. Like, <laughs> like it's like it's fun, to, it's fun to have a little bit of conspiracy in your life, a.k.a. knowledge. But then, like, you go too far with it, then you're just, like, going extreme, you know. So, it's like, you know, there's always a balance in life. You know, you could become overly obsessed about anything, like you could, you know, spend too much time working out or too much time thinking about your own thoughts or it's just kind of interesting. But so, so one thing that is, is kind of a personal note that I wanted to put out there for people, because this is something that I've been thinking about this week. And I just feel like it's, it's, it's kind of something that people should think about. And it's kind of simple. And it's just that, you know, our time on this planet is, is limited. Like we don't know how long we're going to live on this planet for, like if we're lucky, a hundred more than likely in our 80s, you know, so around 80 years, everybody gets, and and, you know, maybe less, you don't know. So you can't control that. So what you can control is the quality of your life. You know, am I waking up and enjoying my morning? Like, am I having fun making the coffee or making the bed? Or, you know, how's the quality of life? Like, are, are, are you being intentional about the quality of your life? Because, because I feel like that's one area where, it's, it's easy to kind of slip away. Like you are just in your thought process and you're not being intentional about your day. And then like your, your day becomes overwhelming and overburdened. And, and you know, if, if you can be intentional about the quality of life and do things that you really enjoy, I'm going to tie this back in, then, then I feel like, you know, because we don't know how much time we got. So focus on the quality. And it seems like you you two are really enjoying what you do for a living and and having a good quality of life with that. And so I, I kind of had a question, and that was if when you were kids, what was your dream job? Like what was your, your – the dream job you wanted the most? <laughs> and then as an adult, would you still want that dream job? This is this hilarious because I actually asked Zach this the other day because it was like some ridiculous security question for a website – and it was like, what would, did you want to be when you grow up? Grew, grow up, and you said. So <laughs> let me just rewind. <laughs> <laughs> so you know, like we, like I, Katie was saying before, we like grew up outside the Quad Cities in Iowa. So it was you know right on the Mississippi River. So you know Fourth of July was just a great holiday for us. We would go down to the beach and you know we'd get a bunch of fireworks and we'd set off all these fireworks you know just from you know from the beach on the Mississippi so when I was a kid I just loved fireworks blowing you know M80s bottle rockets (laughs) the the whole nine you know so I just you know I wanted to blow stuff up when I was a kid so I was you know I, I in confirmation for church you know getting confirmed we we grew up lutheran and then this happened in church like okay what what do you want to be and this is the time like i have no clue what i want to be i don't know what i'm you know 14 i don't know what i want to do with my life yet but in my head i was like well blowing up stuff is pretty fun so like i was like looking at jobs and okay there's something called a pyrotechnician where you can get paid to blow stuff up and so I told everyone this is what I wanted to be, and then I never lived that down. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Yeah, so I was like, so you want me to put pyrotechnician, or what do you want me to put on this? <laughs> so, so now, as an adult, would you still 
want to have a job blowing things up. Yeah, I think that'd still be fun. <laughs> I, I think I probably wanted to be like a teacher or something. <laughs> then my sister became a teacher, and I was like, that's exactly what I don't want to do <laughs> with my life. Um, but to touch on what you were kind of saying, I came from a job where – I had been there for 10 years. It had been a long time. Mm-hmm. I, it was a medical company that I worked for. Um, I learned a lot there, had some great experiences, but then it became so monotonous. It was so nice. Like when Zach brought me the idea about the distillery, I was like, yeah, let's fucking do this. Like we went, you know, I mean, it took some time for us to kind of go through everything. And well, yeah, did decision. you know what you were doing in, in the first place or did you take that? You know, they always call it, you got to take a leap. Took the Took the leap. You can swear. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, like, I learned a lot from my last job. It was kind of a startup. When I started, there was only three people. So I kind of helped do a lot of the sales and marketing processes. So I learned a lot. And they were a manufacturing company, too. So I learned some of that skill set. So I felt comfortable making the leap. But it was more of, like, you know, the opportunities arise. And it's, like, if you don't take them, like, mm-hmm. Are you going to regret that for the rest of your life? Yes. You know, so when you, those opportunities present themselves, it's like you either jump or you don't, and mm-hmm. we jumped. Well, that's fantastic. I couldn't relate <laughs> to that more. I just I just did a jump myself, made a huge career change, took the leap, left a company I've been with for 13 years to pursue something. And, uh, you know, it's just sometimes you got to do it. Yeah. You know, there, the, these motivational videos that we've, we've talked about mm-hmm. over the past few weeks have really impacted me on that because – you know, it's easy to get down. It's easy to question things. And it's, it's nice to uh, have a little bit sense of fulfillment with some of these motivational speeches that I've been listening to. They've impacted me big time. And it sounds like you guys have found a little bit of something that brings you a sense of joy and fulfillment. You know, mm-hmm. something you can put your time and effort to that gives you a return on investment. You know, and time is, a, is an investment, I feel like. You put time into something. Yeah, you know, time is money. Time yeah. is money, you know. <laughs> and I'm sure. tired of working for the man. You know, I want to work for myself, <laughs> yeah. so to speak. And, and being passionate about what you do. Tremendous. Mm. It was more like how I wanted to just like kind of forge our own destiny. At least we have kind of control of our own future. I, I feel like now is like if we mess it up, it's our own fault, you know, but it's, mm-hmm. you know, no one else's but ours. So it's just like as long yeah. as we can kind of create the future we want for ourselves, you know, it just I feel like we it just gives us more control than just going in and punching a clock. You know, you don't Absolutely. really you can't control how much you make or get paid or the sales or do you mm-hmm. know, you don't really have the. Yeah. The freedom, I guess I just, you know, the freedom and the control, you know, is is what, you know, yeah. entices us I think it was easy for me, for too, me. because yeah. Zach had been there for so long, and he is so creative and so passionate on that side of things. And, like, the products are great, and, like, him and Mitch have kind of built this relationship where they, you know, can – everything is consistent and the flow is great and they have this like good working relationship where they have the you know kind of same palette where they understand like this is how we want it to taste and and that for me was like I can get behind that like I can get behind you being oh doing being creative and doing all this stuff and like building a brand that's going to be awesome for ourselves like what and you each are and you each are playing your role and i feel like yeah you're playing the role that best suits you like neither like everybody's kind of like has their passions within the company and everyone has passion for the company as a whole but honestly when, when you start a business when you start doing a business like there's a lot of work you don't want to do and, yeah. and, and that you have to do. And that's that's where I feel like it's important because, like, what you're talking, leaving a job that you've been with, leaving a job you've been with, and, and, and trying to pursue something that is going to make your quality of time better, which, like, we're talking about is, is extremely important. Like, you, you just got to kind of make that that leap sometimes. And I just think it's cool how, how the three of you, it's it's super tight-knit. It's, it's a close group, but – Everything is just co- coming out fun and unique, but then also professional at the same time and, and great flavors. I mean, I'm not generally a gin drinker. I don't normally like gin, but I did whoop, whoop, I did try <laughs> I tried the one that you guys had and, and it was it was good. Like I actually enjoyed that. And like usually there's a different type of bite. So I just think it's cool if if you know, listeners are here in Colorado. Go ahead and look for for these these bad boys oh, yeah. on yeah, the show. Yeah, come see us at down, at down slope. Yeah, no, it's 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 a great time. Yeah, I need to get down there, man, for sure. We're gonna have to have, definitely do some some tasting, live action, you know, in your place. 
Maybe bring a camera down there. We could do some Patreon, you know, live action. Yeah, oh, that that behind would be the so scenes, fun. something like that. But yeah. it's always fun to learn about you the do spirits. do a live tasting. That would be fun. Oh, that'd yeah. Be, that would be great. Yeah. You know, that's just the power of, of networking and, and having a good time. And I think I'm ready to pour a little bit more rye. Yeah, yeah hit, hit me. Also, hit me to touch more. on kind of what you guys were talking about, too, is something that, like, I really worked on myself mm-hmm. is, like, I consider myself a fairly positive person most of the time. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that's a choice. Oh, totally. So, yes. like, you wake up every day and you can choose to be happy. You can choose to make good decisions. You can choose to work. You can choose to not work. So all these things are choices that you make every day. So my choice is to be positive and happy. And I yes. think that I can have such an impact on your mood and the people around you. Like, being around people that complain all the time is, like, my biggest pet peeve, mm-hmm. like, don't complain around me. Please don't do it. Like it's yeah. like it's so toxic for yourself and for everyone around you. It, absolutely, you're, you're speaking absolute truth right there. And, and a lot of people overlook a lot of that stuff. You know, it's important to recognize. Okay, I, you know, the people you surround yourself with. One thing I've learned here in the last two years is monumental. You know, you surround yourself with successful people, you're going to start to feel that. You know, people that have goals, aspirations, positive energy. It, it carries more weight than that negative stuff. Being yeah. pulled down to that negative mindset, also contagious. They both carry different weights, right? We both experience this, yeah. especially in this business. You know, staying positive, staying focused, you know, keeping the mission moving forward. And it's, it's easier said than done at times, I feel like, you know, because we are human. And we're going to wake up and feel discouraged at, at times. Man, I don't know if I want to do today. But just getting up out of bed, mm-hmm. I mean, right there, just committing yeah. to the day, that, that's, that's, that's the game changer. I mean, I, I totally agree, and it's funny that you mentioned that because we constantly talk about the, the power of the mind on this show. I, I think it's, it's the most slept-on tool is your mind. People don't understand that your mind is a tool. If you can get your head around your mind, then you can use it. Yeah. So, so it's, it's interesting, but people do naturally um, – negativity, if you're not being conscious of your thoughts – and, and you're not actually trying to focus on the good because there's always bad and good. They're both consistent, right? They're both always going to be there, and you can choose what, what you, where you want to think about. Sometimes we automatically go to the negative, and that's when you got to pull yourself out. But it's just to be intentional about that is, is important because everybody does have an energy, and you know whether you recognize it or you don't, when you walk into a room, your energy will affect the room. And so what kind of energy do you have when you walk into a room? That's, yeah, you know, basically a question. Yeah. And I think, you know, like with the last year, like with, you know, COVID and everything, it's, you know, been, e- you know, easier to be like discouraged. And, you know, I've, you know, been catching myself, you know, like getting frustrated or worried about, you know, the business or how, you know, where we see the future going, you know, with everything going on in the world. And it's just like, you know, I, I catch myself being like, well, I can't change that. Like that, you know, let's, you know, kind of focus on what I can exactly. affect or, you know, move and then just try to zone it out and don't even listen to it and just keep moving forward type, type yeah. deal. I guess that's how I, I, I work. Yeah, I mean, COVID was rough for everyone, I think. So um, it's just, yeah, kind of trying to get in the right mindset and, you know, just trying to stay positive. Like I was saying is like kind of our motto is, Let's see what we can do today, and let's just get it done. Mm-hmm. That's yeah. it. Getting up, getting after it, because there's a lot of fear chum in the water right now. You know, a lot of fear chum for sure. <laughs> and, and the fear, it, it can, it can contaminate us. You know, especially as you know, you're, you're trying to promote a product, you're trying to offer a service. You know, there's restrictions. You can only have X amount of people in your business. It's, t- it's th- those things alone break you down. You go, man, how the hell are we gonna overcome this? So that mental toughness. You guys obviously yeah. had it. Yeah. Crazy. Crazy year. Yeah. But, I, <laughs> but we bought know, a business yeah, after, so. Yeah, so I think, and then, but, it, you know, we, I, it kind of, you know, we, I think we saw the opportunity, and then we kind of jumped at it, though. And I think the opportunity kind of arose because of the pandemic and the last year, you know. I think the old owner, you know, got pretty frustrated with everything that was happening, you know. And we were like, well, we'll, we'll take some of that frustration. Yeah, we'll <laughs> yeah. take that off here. <laughs> For sure. Yeah. So, Own it. So um, kind of tying into that, like, um, so you have the I'm, – I'm retracing. Sometimes, like, I lose it and I come back. So you have the positives and the negatives. They're always there. You have a choice on what you want to focus on. But that that's not the whole picture. Like, there's more to it than that because 
Like there's always going to be a next challenge. There, there's always going to be a next thing that didn't go right. Like it, that, it, that is also a consistent is how I feel. Mm-hmm. Like, so uh, that, you know, preparing your mind to just take, take on the rain. Like you you have an invisible umbrella over your head and you're ready to just walk through the rain and, and you're ready to handle it. So I, I feel like there's a lot of different areas where people can be conscious, but you got to give yourself a break too. Like it, it's, it's hard to be perfect all the time. You can't always be positive. Like we all get negative at times and that's, that's okay. You know, but just, you know, get it out in like two to three minutes and then jump back on the train, you know? Yeah. I think on that note, that note too, it's like, Having, like, a support system around you, whether it be your friends or your family or your coworkers even or, like, people that you can talk to about those things is, like, super important. Like, of course, we all have negative thoughts and things that, like, we need to work on or, like, problems that we have in our life that we're trying to solve. Um, But, like, I think... For me, I have like a great network of friends around me, some that are entrepreneurs themselves. So it's always nice to kind of have that to be able to like bounce ideas off of Mm -hmm. or, you know, let your frustrations out because a lot of them probably have gone through similar situations. And I think that's something that Denver does well, too. There's a lot of networking things around. There's a lot of, I know we can't go to them right now. A lot of them aren't. Some of them are virtual now, but... Mm -hmm. Denver does have a good network of like entrepreneurs or um, so like stuff for like the business. Even like I talked to an old coworker today and I was like, cause I knew she was an expert in this area. And I'm like, Hey, like, what are your thoughts on this? And she was like, you know, helped me right away. So like mm-hmm. having that support system around you so that you can like, you know, vent a little bit, maybe also go to brunch or do some fun things with that's, you know, everyone needs some self care and some time away from the office too. Oh, for sure. Yeah. And I think it's, like, knowing what people are good at and, like, what you specialize into. Like, I think that's, like, goes back to, like, why we work so well together is we don't all specialize in the same stuff. We all specialize in different things. So it's, like, we come into the distillery and all of us have a different mindset and focus on what we need to do for the day. If we yeah. If we all came in and we all wanted to be distillers... Mm-hmm. We would be all stepping on everyone on each other's <laughs> yeah. toes, like trying to distill stuff. But like, you know, Mitch is like, okay, I do this. You know, I'm like, okay, well, I do this, and you do that. Yeah, there could mm-hmm. be like so five hours where I don't see anyone. Yeah. I'm in the office by myself doing paperwork or working on sales stuff, and they'll be in the back doing their thing. So like, yeah, we try to stay in our lanes and like make sure that like, you know, know we, your people, know what they're good at, know their strengths, know yeah. their weaknesses, mm-hmm. and you know, just work to you know try to pair them up to where we can get the best experience out of everyone. We have the same goal, but we all got to do our own thing to get there. Yeah, Absolutely. It's good to have a system in place. You know, what everybody's good at, it obviously works, you know, comes together, you feel the energy. It's like Art and I do here, you know. When we're off camera, when we're here on Thursdays or whatever, doing production and editing, you know, we're not always agreeing all the time. You know, (laughs) we're not. We just, we don't. And, And that's also productive in itself because it's like, look, I think we should do it this way. You think you should do it that way. It's good to have that bounce back. You yeah, know, how boring would life trust. be if everyone agreed about everything? <laughs> be extremely yeah. boring. And it's good to challenge one another, you know, and to utilize everybody's skill set, like you guys are saying. And know your role. Stay in your lane, right? That's what makes the whole teamwork makes the dream work. Mm-hmm. I'm a firm believer in that. Yeah, for sure. I mean, there's only so many hours in a day. Like, there's too much to do. Like, especially oh, when yeah. you're running a business, like actually doing something big, like, you can't do it by yourself. Yeah, today before we left, we looked at each other. Oh, this can wait till tomorrow. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Weigh the whisker. You know, what, we got to handle this today, but yeah, we might be able to address yeah, that tomorrow. Yeah. Maybe that the next day. Can mm. go wait till tomorrow. Yeah. 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 yeah we so. have a podcast to get to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Denver's hottest. <laughs> yeah, that's that's so awesome. You guys were able to make the trip down here, and uh, one of the segments we do on the show is a word of the week, mm-hmm. and we do have a word of the week, guys. Woo-hoo. We have a word of the week submission. You know, our listeners know you can submit these to all social media platforms discussioncombustion at gmail.com. This word of the week comes from, where are we at? Tallahassee, Florida. Uh-huh. Tallahassee, Florida. Tallahassee, huh? Oh, yep. man. Yep, this comes from See a, what it's going to be. Uh, here we go. comes from a gentleman by the name of Andrew. Thanks, Andrew. And the word of the week is meliorism. Yep, meliorism is okay, the word of the week. Mel... Can you M- say please slur? define meliorism. Can you use it in a sentence? Please? Yeah. <laughs> Can you spell that for me? What is the Mel- origin? As a, yeah, uh, used in a sentence, as a behavior of meliorism, meliorism, the activist felt that every small effort he made 
had a positive impact on this world. That's that, kind of what we were talking about. I think that, that fits in. That ties discussion. in perfectly. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Andrew from Tallahassee. Yeah, thanks, right. Andrew. And we're going to dive yeah. into this. Yeah, so Katie, Zach, guesses? Any guesses on the definition of this word? Um, What's the definition? Can you say this sentence again? <laughs> So the sentence, we'll, we can use it. Well, I'll use another sentence. Okay. Mm-hmm. The professor explained that meliorism gives hope to those, to the world who become and believe in a better place. Okay. Did you just tell us he gives hope to people? <laughs> this is a little bit more powerful than I expected. Yeah. Ties in perfectly, though, what we were talking about, Gaz. Yeah. Um, For the record, I didn't so know what this word meant. I just have the dictionary in front of me. I don't know shit. <laughs> <laughs> You, it instills you guys got, hope I, in people. Yes. Instills hope in people. Small changes <laughs> to <laughs> accomplish big goals or something. I think collectively we're going to hit this art. What do you think? Um, you know, the instilling hope, that's, that's pretty much, you know, what's another synonym for that? You know, creating courage or something. Mm-hmm. Um, Mel meliorism. Yep. So meliorism. Yep. Meliorism. Kind of like a brain or being disorder. melioristic would be the act of being. So meliorism, and then the act of meliorism, right? Melioristic. So the definition boils down to the belief that the human condition can be improved through connected effort, and the belief that there is an inherent tendency mm. toward progress of improvement in the human condition. That's the definition. Jeez, hmm. Andrew. Pretty, loaded word. Pretty in depth, guys. Andrew. <laughs> Andrew from Tallahassee. Andrew, that was as hot as the weather down there. <laughs> yeah. And actually, it did tie in perfectly what we were saying. So thanks, yeah. Andrew. It did. So, so we were kind of on the right track there. But the, the biggest difference from what we were talking about to what it actually meant is, is that it's instilling the hope in many, not, not an it's, individual. Right. Seems like it's more about the Believing human the condition or like the what you experience. So yeah. kind of too, sure. like your own well-being and happiness. Mm. And that's a, instilling a strong belief that the majorities can come together and really take this thing by the horns. Mm-hmm. That's the word of the week. I feel inspired right now. Do you? Yeah, I feel like that was a, a good, powerful word that means something. Say it three times fast. Meliorism, meliorism, <laughs> meliorism. Was that one time fast? I don't know if I could say it. Kevin, give us a... Meliorism, meliorism, meliorism. That was the same speed I did. Yeah. All right, Zach. How fast can we go? I'm meliorism, not... meliorism, meliorism, meliorism. <laughs> oh, just that was lightning. Oh, that man. was lightning. No one's touching that. <laughs> you, you... In this picture, are you guys in a bathroom? Oh, okay. So we have... Uh, if you guys go back to the, to the original audio stuff, okay, this used this was our original oh, yeah, logo. <laughs> it looks like a bathroom of a bar, doesn't it? Yeah, it, I could see that. So uh, that's like the the stall right there. Yeah, with the and everyone's on like it. writing on it. We're just chilling She's in the stall. She's commenting on uh, yeah. So the old studio there. That's that's a throwback to the old studio. So anyone watching, also listening, can't see it either way. So no matter where you're <laughs> Sorry at, I called no, it no, it's, I'm glad you did. Cause that's a throwback to the old studio, which we had talked about earlier that smelled mm-hmm. a little bit like uh, sweaty socks and, and cigarette smoke. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so it smells a little bit better. In the so new that, studio. that really good. In the here, wall so. behind us there, we, it was this, it was a foundation in the basement. So it was a made huge of foundation cement. wall. It was made of cement. And we would have everybody sign it. So for like what was it? Ninety four episodes we did there. Ninety two like, episodes we did there. Everybody yeah. would sign the wall. So now what? Everybody. I know we, we've been missing that that we, piece. We had this idea. We should get a table. Yeah, we had this idea that we were going to take a picture mm-hmm. of the old wall and then put it like over here oh. and have people sign over it. Yeah, which we we might visit. It would again. just be, it, you know, that's going to be costly to get like this thing blown up and life size on there. Then some of the signatures probably won't look. Well, and then nice. you got to save enough pixelated. room for for additional people to sign over. True. I think you should just so. build a custom table in here. And you think? Then, yeah, then everyone can sign the Steve, table. Like, something like that just says that, like that black poster and just get like the silver Sharpies and just let everyone sign the. Yeah, they'll that. fill up so fast. Yeah. That's, that's a good point. We'll make it bigger. That was fun. <laughs> we need to get back to the signatures. That was a nice touch to it the It was guest. fun, you know, and, and that wasn't part of the show. That was like after the show, like, hey. It was the poster. Yeah. You know, yeah. You know we're, we're getting your John Hancocks. But now we do that on a release form. Instead of that's on true. a on a foundation wall. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. But mm-hmm. so I've been I've been trying to think on a would you rather a good would you rather for the two of you. Mm-hmm. So let's say that if you guys were to have a distillery in in either of these two places, it's not Colorado. Mm-hmm. All right, 
are you either going to go to the Appalachian area, like let's say, you know, Kentucky, maybe, you know, the southern Appalachians, let's say, or would you rather go to, you know, the northwest, that Pacific Pacific uh, mountain range? Would you prefer to, to go west or east with, with the business? Northwest. I'm yeah, sure. I was going to say northwest too. I don't know why. Yeah, just for, I mean, my, wise, yeah, region-wise thinking is, I mean, all the main bourbon distilleries are southeast, you know, and like okay. they kind of have that area pretty locked down where I think, you know, the west coast is a little bit more open for experimentation and people's preference i think are not so rigid rigid. yeah exactly Mm -hmm. yeah like you ever talk to someone that's from kentucky they think the only whiskey that's good is from kentucky (laughs) we're all a little partial i mean i agree for sure like obviously we got some iowa pride in here but it's not like i would discount anyone from being from a different state i just sometimes like i they're like well have you had kentucky whiskey i'm like of course i've had kentucky whiskey (laughs) Yeah, if you, if you haven't, then have you had whiskey? Yeah, that's true. Yeah, I mean, exactly. I feel like when you're introduced to whiskey, probably one of the first things that's going to happen is either Tennessee or Kentucky whiskey, right? Oh, yeah. If you're dealing with Jack Daniels, Maker's Mark, you know, that kind of vicinity. So that makes sense. I mean, that's a very contaminated area with a lot of different whiskey establishments. So the Northwest, that's a good point. So, but you could potentially still have a reach in the Northwest with what you're doing right now. Mm -hmm. Um, I know that you're in Colorado only at the current time. Yeah, we have a partner in Illinois. You can order through spirithub.com. Okay. So we do ship to Illinois addresses through them. They are one of our partners. Um, But right now it is only Colorado and Illinois that we are available. Nice. It's very, and it's not very much goes to Illinois. It's, over 90% of our business is done in Colorado. Nice. But if you Illinois people start ordering, whoop, whoop. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then it keeps growing. The fire keeps rolling. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, absolutely. The peop- the the 10% of those sales that are going to Chicago and, and all the Illinois areas, those are probably the people that want to have their palate. You know, they want to explore the, the taste, the palates, the taste, you know. And, and that's the thing is, like, what you two are doing – and Mitch is just really unique to Colorado and and it's a unique brand also because like the three of you makes it unique and then that it's all done in house that you get locally sourced seeds and like barley and all, and all that sort of stuff uh, it's not seeds what was it what's it called again so we talked to them today so we haven't it's gotten anything from them yet but yeah but it's yeah grain grain so, that's yeah, the word yeah i mean malted barley i mean it's basically a seed that's just been sprouted and then just like dried so it's yeah you know, it's basically this a seed from a, a barley plant. so you know what you're talking about yeah okay <laughs> yeah sometimes i use words and then uh, my one of my things that makes me the most weird is that <laughs> I can't stop from thinking out loud. So I'm constantly thinking out loud and I'm very indecisive. So I'm going back and forth and it's just like, Arthur, you just got to quiet it down, process (laughs) this in your head, figure it out first instead of telling everybody what you're thinking. And that's that's why I think I'm weird. Yeah, but I mean, do you really need to adjust that? Because that's, yeah, that's one of your greatest qualities. Why you yeah. have a podcast? So. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. That's what it makes it work, Art. When you when you go on these rants, it's like, oh, yeah, keep it coming. <laughs> yeah, it's entrepreneur expert, oh, you know, all that kind of stuff, man. That's what it's about. It's fun, Don't man. Cut yourself short, brother. Yeah. Hey, you know, everyone's their own worst critic, right? Like we we all critique ourselves, and it's true. You know, at the end of the day, like who cares? Like right. you know, as, who cares what anybody else thinks? And like. I'm going to quote Will Smith. That's the second time I've hit my mic. I'm sorry, people. But, um, <laughs> I Will thought you were going to say this is the second time I've quoted Will Smith. <laughs> I, may have, I may have quoted him before, honestly. So, you know, but he had a good one where he was just talking about, um, you know, how you define yourself and, and having confidence from within and to define yourself based upon other people's opinions is a really shitty way to, to yeah, develop live yourself. Yeah, your life, too. Yeah. So it's okay to be weird and quirky. It's it's okay to the to, best people yeah. are weird and quirky. Yeah, let's not fit. Let's not fit into these mainstream mentalities. Like what you're talking about, leaving places, Zach. What you're talking about, taking risks and you know having fun with your job and creating new new beverages. Like you're breaking the mold because 
we're taught from from kids to to grow up and you know go to college next and then you know from college you go find your nice job where you're an employee <laughs> and then you get your benefits and then and then you are and then you save for retirement and and that's like what is taught to people and they want people to to stay in that rhythm they they want people to be comfortable where they're at because the second that everybody starts really pursuing what's important to them and and they're like you know that job is for the birds i don't enjoy my life here i'm about quality of time my time's limited i'm doing something else like if everybody did that then you know what what happens to these big corporations like they they lose control yeah you know yeah exactly right yeah the rat race yeah like go going back to like being like unique and stuff like even like in the distillery world i think a lot of people kind of get caught in like tradition you know, like, okay, this is how it was done historically. Like, okay, this is the ingredients this you, that you use. This is how you distilled it. This is how you did everything from start to finish. And there's a lot of places are like, okay, I'm going to do that. Okay, I'm going to – I like, you know, Maker's Mark or I like some bourbon. I'm going to copy them. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to make my own brand. And I'm going to make the same product or similar product. And Because we teach classes all the time. We get a lot of people who are – interest in, in opening distilleries are already have DSPs and, and everything. And they're coming in like, okay, I want to copy this. And then I'm always just like, why? <laughs> like, yeah. why do you want to do that? Like our whole thing is we want to make unique, interesting spirits that no one else is making. Like all of our stuff will, will won't taste like anything else on the market. Like, why do you want to copy someone? Because a person can go in and just buy that then. Like, why would you try yeah. to imitate someone when your imitation is going to be probably pretty similar to what they're doing. Like, Mm -hmm. you know, like why are you going to limit yourself or your thinking to like this small sliver of what's out there? Like tradition, thinking, you know. So so just tell us about a little bit of the risk involved with that because when you have that sort of mentality, you're going to trip up, you're going to have speed bumps. Like what are some of your major hurdles, both of you, that you feel like we're critical to get over to see this next phase of success that you're seeing. Well, <laughs> that's I, mean, I mean, we don't have to go too deep yeah. into that. You know, it's, it's, you know, it's equipment it's scaling, you know, it's just, mm-hmm. you know, you're getting bigger and bigger, but like our whole thing is, you know, being, you know, small batch and tiny stuff, you know, but our, our whole risk, you know, it, a lot of work goes into filling just even one barrel of whiskey. You know, you're, you're talking probably almost a thousand pounds of grain goes into one barrel. So for us to be experimental and like doing new crazy stuff, that's a huge risk financially to do that. Cause is there a market for it yet? We don't know. No one else has done this. Yeah. Okay. Well, like all these other big distilleries are, you know, you know, kind of planning off what's already been done. Okay, we've tested the market. We've sold this. We know there's a, at least a like somewhat of a market for this. So let's keep trying to grow that market. You know, some of the stuff we're making, we're like, well, we don't know if there's a market for it. No one's ever done it, but let's do it. You know, and it's mm-hmm. that's the kind of where the risk is. It's like, will anybody like this? Will anybody buy it? You know, yeah, but like, like we, think we have the somewhere, confidence you know? that it's good. That we think it's good. It's like. Yeah. Is the perception in the market going to be the same as what we think too? Like, and, yeah. then, and then it's you know we have to kind of see where the market's going three to five years in the future. You know, like the whiskey that we're making today won't be ready True. for five years. Yeah, so you're like living, you're like in almost living in a time capsule. <laughs> and right? it's it, I I more think of it like kind of like betting. You know, like we're kind of tr- hedging a bet that we think this is the future of whiskey. You know, and it's going to pivot from where it is now. So like you know, the, well, you know maybe you'll create a yeah. new trend too like you, you don't know until you try something different like that's the thing like a lot of people like what you were saying want want to learn and they're like okay that system works i'm comfortable with the system that already works and so that's why they don't veer outside of that but it's like nothing new is going to come of that yeah. and are you challenging yourself then yeah, you know it's Especially would, in the whiskey, I think. Like, there's been, more recently, there's been a new, like, gin craze. Gin's kind of had, like, this resurgence of playing with different flavors and different, 
you know, there's just been kind of a resurgence in people liking gin, mm. and we obviously our gin's amazing. Um, we have one gin, but there are companies that are only making gin, and they have like a lavender gin or a pink gin, a rose gin, and so there's been like this resurgence of gin, but like whiskey, like new things don't come about that often. Mm-hmm. So like right now, there's like quite a few like distillers. You know, we're trying to get American single malt kind of as a category so like you know bourbon has been defined by the ttb or which is like the tax and trade bureau which is the government agency over us who regulates alcohol basically and like bourbon has been defined for you know hundreds couple hundred years at this point like these are the ingredients that you use is kind of how you age it Mm -hmm. whereas like you know these new kind of whiskeys that people are kind of developing in the united states that kind of mimic scotch aren't really defined yet by by the TTB. So there's, mm-hmm. you know, distillers who are trying to get them to define these. So we can make categories, basically. So like kind of how Katie was saying, you know, American single malt, I think, is going to be a huge new category moving in the future. And then in, uh, it's like new Western style of gin. So like the old gin, most people are, you know, used to drinking is going to be like that London dry style of gin, which is basically just... Grain neutral spirits and then just juniper. It's so like it's, drinking at Christmas. Too. Yeah, so you hmm. know, really heavy on the juniper. There might be a few other you know herbs and spices in there, but you know, you know, very kind of one note. I would call it just pine Christmas tree burning. Whereas like kind yeah. of a lot of the new gins that are coming out are a lot it's more interesting. Flavored. Yeah, like you know, a lot of other botanicals, a lot of herbs, spices, everything else in between, and. That's where I think the future of gin's kind of going, the future of whiskey. You know, it's bourbon's kind of had the lockdown on American whiskey. And I think that market's going to evolve and open up where it's not just going to be bourbon anymore. Hmm. I think single malts and weeded and these ryes are really going to have kind of like their day and coming, I think. Yeah, we are actually going to release our first bourbon this winter. Mm. Ooh. So stay tuned. Yeah. First Excited bourbon coming this it. winter. Huh? Yeah. yeah. Well, Sounds like a great time to release a bourbon. That is mm-hmm. a great time. Yeah. Yeah, and then, yeah, so we're doing, and then, like, we're not imitating anybody's bourbon. Like, we have a huge barley percent, and, like, we we kind of stick by kind of like that single malt. We, you know, we were all kind of beer brewers, so we love barley. You know, barley mm-hmm. and rye. Like, we use a little bit of corn every now and then. Um, some wheat, some other stuff, some, like, flavor grains, but... No, we were beer brewers. We love malted barley. That's like our our jam. Yeah, our single malt one, um, the Breckenridge. Crestford. Yeah, yeah, so we won a gold uh, in 2019 for our single malt whiskey. Congratulations oh, for that. That's fantastic. Yeah. Yeah, and for sure. This, that was, you know, two years ago now. But, like, our single malt is it's fantastic. and I, I think I got one of those bottles. I think you did. When I, when I went. That's like your flagship. Right? No, that's the double diamond whiskey. So okay, so I got the double diamond and then I got that uh, agave spirit. Yeah. So okay. our double diamond whiskey is a unique hybrid whiskey. It's yeah, kind so it's... of, it's 35% rye, 65% British floor malted barley. It's a little bit sweeter. Um, yeah, that one's our flagship. It's named after our custom double diamond pot still. So if you guys yeah, ever come so, out yeah. to see us, you can mm-hmm. see the pot still in person it's beautiful it's really cool it's copper right yeah Mm -hmm. so it's 100 percent copper it was custom made and then mitch actually designed that still so he designed the still and we had it manufactured um and it's really unique too like there's i think there's maybe other one or two others in the world that basically just you know the guy who made ours was like oh I can make these for other distilleries. Yeah, so it's, it's basically like two diamonds on top of one another. Mm-hmm. So that's kind of how it looks with a huge reservoir underneath those those two guys. I forget the whole process, but if you guys go in and check it out, no touchy because that thing is hot. It gets very hot. <laughs> and, and my dumbass, I'm in there during the tour, and I'm like, oh, I'm like, oh, this thing I is I did so- not know you did that. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm like, this thing is so, this is so cool. And I, I, I'm like kind of a tree guy. Like sometimes I'll go touch trees and feel like I'm feel your energy like you're an amazing tree and and i felt that energy coming from what is that piece of equipment called it's it's, it's a pot still a so pot still. all of our whiskeys and like that's double why diamond taste, pot still. that's why they taste so good too is all of our stuff is all pot distilled so there's like two main types of stills it's okay like your pot still and then your column still which has 
if you've ever been in the distillery, all the plates in it, and they have, like, the little sight glasses, you know, mm-hmm. all the way up the column. So our whiskeys are really unique because they're all copper pot distilled. Um, we're very small batch. It's a 220-gallon pot still that, that we run. And, yeah, I'm pretty sure I warned you when, when he came in. I was like, be careful, it's hot. And then he's yeah. <laughs> proceeds yeah, to touch I, I, I honestly <laughs> had... I, I was feeling fantastic at that time, and I was overwhelmed with excitement. I wouldn't be surprised if I missed some words there, <laughs> for sure. But, um, no, what what a great operation you guys got going and product and uh, motivation behind it. I think that's that's the coolest thing that we captured today. Like, obviously, rise, whiskeys, you know, agave rye spirits. Rye or die. Yeah, rye or die. Yeah. Hashtag like rye, or rye or die. Or die. <laughs> All that stuff is great, but w- the motivation behind it, I feel like that's what really speaks to people because the drive, the the creativity that was going into this and what's coming out of it, you know, I feel like a lot of people could relate to that. And so whatever the drive is, whatever your creativity is out there, believe and achieve that, you know, uh, believe, seeing, you know, recognizing it, recognize what you're actually passionate about and, and go out there and, and take small steps to achieve that major goal of doing what you love and, and breaking the mold in life. Man, it's important to just grab the bull by the horns and own it. You guys have done that. You know, you found something you guys do well at. And uh, this is delicious whiskey. You guys have something here. It's a competitive market, right? We have a lot of spirits we can choose from. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and give this the, the seal of approval. This was a great whiskey. I really enjoyed it. I'm super excited to try more of your guys' products. Come down to Downslope, see what you guys are all about. Live mm-hmm. action, you know, because I haven't had the chance to experience that like Art has. But, uh, yeah, this, is, this has been good, man. You guys have enlightened us. We're definitely going to get you back on the show come wintertime when the bourbon yeah. comes out. And before we close here tonight, I think the important thing is, guys, where, where can people go to see you, social media, how do they find you? Yeah, so we're located on 6770 South Dawson Circle, Arapaho and Jordan in Centennial, Colorado. 6770 Dawson South, Circle. South Dawson Circle. South yeah. Dawson Circle. Centennial, Colorado. Just in case if anyone was writing it down, maybe, maybe they wanted to hear bad. that. <laughs> maybe they wanted to hear that. Yeah, and time. then our social media, you can follow us on Instagram at Downslope Distilling. And same for Facebook, um, Downslope Distilling. Check us out. Perfect. And we'll include all that in the show notes down below as well. So if anyone's watching on YouTube, if you're listening on Spotify, wherever the hell you're at, look at the links below. That'll connect you with these guys. Katie Mm -hmm. and Zach, this has been a fantastic evening. We're going to drink some more whiskey off air, I think. Yeah, we're we're, we're going to have a couple more, you know, close out out the night strong. And, um, man, the week is always the week for you. I mean, I always like to go on these rants at the end. But let's think about it. Like, we're only going to have this week once. We only got tonight once. We only got today once. Like, if you could do one little thing to push yourself forward that you could be happy that you achieved something. You know, that that's what it's about is doing little things because all those little things that you do and you start tacking off all the little achievements, like that builds a mentality. That builds this personality that to where you are ready to achieve the next small goal and it doesn't matter what obstacles in your way because it's it's right there and, and you know that you can go through the pain you can go through the stress and still achieve that so let's just let's just focus on finishing this week this day strong kevin that's what it is man you know closing with the pot of vibes it's been another great episode i love drinking whiskey i love meeting new people you guys have been fantastic uh mom i'm thinking of you we got big surgery tomorrow so mm-hmm. Um, shout out to my mother. We're going to get through this thing. But in the meantime, we got Jacqueline joining us next week for yes. episode 113. We're going to be focusing on the 99 Hearts Foundation and what they do over there. Great charity stuff coming up. But in the meantime, be sure to check out Downslope Distilling. It's going to be so much fun, man. I can't wait to get down there. We're going to do some live action stuff. But until then, y'all be good to yourselves. You deserve it, dude.